Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. We're glad you joined us. Dr. Jason Nickel from Merck Animal Health is going to be here. He's the Director of Insights and Outcomes, and we're going to talk about technology coming to the beef industry. You're not going to want to miss this one. Stay tuned. They're here. They're hungry. And they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm here today with Dr. Jason Nickel, who's a friend and colleague, tremendous veterinarian, tremendous researcher in the beef industry, um, done a lot of great things for a lot of people uh, and a lot of cows. And um, Jason is the Director of Insights and Outcomes for Merck Animal Health, which if you're thinking about how big Merck Animal Health is and to be the Director of Insights and Outcomes, that's a little bit of a job. It, it is turning into a big job. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, well first and foremost, thanks for having me. Yep. Much appreciated. Um, but no, I, you know, honestly, I, I have been with Merck, Merck for several years now, and and my position has evolved over uh, that that time frame. So when I came on board roughly eight years ago, we had one technology in the form of the original Whisper technology, and we were part of a small group that was called Precision Cattle Technologies. And since that time, over the last seven, eight years, it has ballooned into... Um, this this segment of the of the business that has allowed us to diversify um, and and grow, but uh, you know we've seen a number of of large acquisitions take place and and brought on a lot of good people. So it, it's been it's been a lot of fun to see how it's all transpired over time. It's awesome. Well, we're going to talk about a technology that that is really really cool. It's called Sense Hub. That's right. So help us get us. Queued up, teed up, tell us what SenseHub is and, and kind of yeah. what, what it entails. Yeah. So SenseHub in and of itself is, is really the umbrella program for all of our monitoring technologies. And so at, at a high level, what uh, animal monitoring is in, intended to do is to use wear, different wearable technologies to capture biometric data. And, that, and what I mean by that is really nothing more than... Uh, it could be animal movement uh, by itself. It could be animal movement in conjunction with body temperature. But, but really what it is, is it's, it's capturing information that the human by ourselves cannot see. And it's doing that all day, every day. And then we apply artificial intelligence techniques to draw uh, insights and information out of that data that our minds just frankly just cannot comprehend right and so and then we utilize that to make management decisions with and so whether it be feedlot cattle or cow calf which yep. we're getting into dairy cattle which is the most evolved honestly and then down the road swine and poultry really using that information to do a lot of the same stuff yeah and so kind of walk us through like what what does a system look like um you know uh, for for feedlot or for cow calf yeah. So really, at, at the end of the day, conceptually, it's it's all very similar. It may look a little bit different. It may act and feel a little bit different, but it, it's really all the same. I mean, it really all starts with that animal and the the wearable technology on that animal. So whether it be a an ear tag, whether in the feedlot or the cow calf space, or a or a neck collar in the in the dairy space. Those wearables, just like a Fitbit for mm -hmm. a human, yep. are capturing that data that it's intended to. It's pushing it to a, a centralized antenna, mm -hmm. and then that data from there is being pushed to a cloud 
platform. And depending upon the system, the, the artificial intelligence may either act locally or in the cloud, but basically that, that data is then broken down. It's then put into a usable form for the, the customer or the veterinarian or the nutritionist. And then that those individuals make decisions, management decisions, treatment decisions based on that information. It's awesome. It's a great way to identify the animals that need treated Absolutely. earlier and um, uh, just an unbelievable technology. When we come back with Dr. Nickel, we're going to talk about uh, how Sense Hub can be used in the feed yard and in cow-calf operations. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. Hi, my name is Dr. Kirk Ramsey with Neogen. Today, we're going to talk about getting those first calf heifers to breed back. Their success is our success. So here's how we can help them thrive. First, nutrition matters big time. These new moms have incredibly high nutrient requirements. So not only are they still growing, but lactation takes it to a whole new level. So in order to meet those demands, separating and supplementing them away from the mature cows is something we probably should be considering. Second, body condition score is key. Heifers with a body condition score of six at calving are way more likely to breed back on time. So let's make sure to be tracking that. Third, early breeding season is a win-win. Start the season earlier for heifers. Heifers bred within 21 days of the first breeding cycle are more likely to breed back. They're gonna wean heavier calves, and it's even shown that they're gonna last longer in our herd. And last, address energy demands as early as possible. Energy requirements at calving skyrocket almost immediately, and compensating for poor condition after calving is nearly impossible. So focus on the last months prior to calving to make any condition adjustments that you need to. So by nailing these couple points, we boost their breeding success, leading to a healthier herd, heavier calves, and a more profitable operation. Thanks for watching Cattle Intel by Neogen. Are you a cattle feeder looking to manage for a stronger and more profitable set of cattle? Look no further than Igenity Feeder. Igenity Feeder utilizes DNA to gain insight into your cattle's genomic potential. With the information to predict performance, quality, and economic endpoints for cattle feeders. Animals are scored and ranked in a simple format, driving more precise and accurate management decisions. Igenity Feeder gives you the power to predict days on feed, manage variability within lots, characterize carcass performance, and focus on metrics important to you and your operation. With the data provided, you will identify superior animals earlier and maintain high operational efficiency. Maximize your profit and optimize performance with Igenity Feeder. This fall, Rodrigo with Therapies came to me and wanted me to try this product. Since then, our medicine bills went to nothing. This is not an antibiotic. It makes your cattle keep hydrated. It makes your antibiotics and your drugs work like they should. We went from doctoring 40% of them last November to almost nothing. This is not a paid advertisement. This is good stuff. If you want to make some money, buy some little calves, use this Therapies and save a lot. It is the best product I've ever used. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jason Nickel. He's the Director of Insights and Outcomes for Merck Animal Health. Today we're going to talk about Sense Hub. It's being adapted in the feed yards, right? It is. Correct. So, so kind of walk us through what the Sense Hub feedlot platform looks like. Yeah, so the, the Sense Hub feedlot uh, system is going to look, look, look and feel a little bit different than our dairy or our cow calf systems. Um, a lot of that is just due simply to the fact that the environment's different, the management requirements are, are a little bit different, you know, utilizing a little bit of different, uh, a little bit different technology. But big picture, Dan, is that it is capturing that anim that individual animal's activity and body temperature through a wearable device. Okay. And that wearable device is in the form of a ear tag. Yep. That information is captured all day, every day. And uh, then that data is digested by the artificial intelligence algorithms that are working in the background. That data is then utilized to see who is basically an outlier. Okay. So in order to be an outlier, we have to know 
what 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 is normal yep. right and so we have to have a period of time where we gain an idea of what's normal for that animal and for that group and then from then on the algorithm is there to help us decide at the individual animal level is that animal different than its historical data but also is it different than the group as well and so if that animal is then identified as being an outlier it creates a list on a daily basis to say these, these are the animals that are different. Here is the pins that they're located in, and we're going to turn their tag on, and it's going to blink for the next six hours to help <laughs> you find them. So at, at a very high level, that's the, that's the application today. So it's, I think it's important to understand that we put a tag in everybody's ear in the pin, and not only are you collecting data on that one, on each animal every day to what's normal, but then baseline that against the way the rest of the group's acting. Right. Right. That's imperative. That, that's imperative. It just simply because, it, I mean, you know as well as anybody, uh, these animals do not behave independent necessarily of animals that they're, of the group that they're a part of, right? And, and we have weather effects that, that impact the group. We have nutritional effects that impact the group. And you don't want to falsely alert animals that may be different if it's happening to everybody in the pen because it, be, it, it may be normal. So, yep. Right. Yep. so then um, this comes down from after the intel, mm -hmm. um, you ingest it, you do the intelligence, and then you, does this come, this comes back to the manager, does it come to a phone, does it, you know, on, did, can I generate a phone list for like a pen writer or somebody? I mean, with the labor shortage that we have yeah. out there and, and the number of people with that, that have decreased experience coming into our industry, um, this can be a tremendous tool to give them a list and say, hey, go find these kids. Yeah, I mean, what we're finding is that although it may not necessarily decrease your need for labor, it, it, you still have to have people. You still, and you're not, you're not, you're giving them an additional tool, but it helps in our minds, helps optimize their their day-to-day -day labor in a lot of cases. It may not reduce it, but it is, it definitely does optimize it. It's like I, I have said before that just because you have a baby monitor doesn't mean you don't need a mom. Absolutely. And, and so Absolutely. this is just another tool to help good stockmen do their job better. Absolutely. Just another tool in the toolbox. Yep. We're going to take a break. When we come back. We're going to talk a little more about Sense Hub Feed Yard. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad you joined us. Every farmer knows that understanding the landscape is the most important ingredient for success. When it comes to investing in precious metals, United Patriot Coin can help steer you in the right direction. No obligation, just solid advice. Call now for your free guide, 844-202-7834. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful regardless of the age of the animal. At Solvit, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. Ranchers, looking to elevate your pasture management game? Turn to Heinen Brothers for expert aerial application. With state-of-the-art equipment and seasoned pilots, we deliver precision treatments right to your fields. From fertilizers to herbicides, Heinen Brothers has your pasture covered. Visit HeinenBrosAg.com to learn more. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jason Nickel. He is the, he's a veterinarian, uh, PhD, uh, and he is the Director of Insights and Outcomes for Merck Animal Health. And I've worked with Jason for, for decades. Um, good friend, great veterinarian. Um, and, and to say what this technology is going to do in the future, I don't. I, w what I've seen it in the yards that I have that use it has been remarkable. Um, but but the sky's the the limit. Kind of walk us through your your journey with this technology. Yeah, no, and thank you, Dan, for that. It it uh, it is a journey, and I and I think really we're just we're just starting, and and 
you know, if I, if we look back at the row crop industry, I mean, it took them a long time to really, you know, to get, to get where they're at today, but you know, they're, they're able to do a lot of things with, with the data that they, that they collect. And same thing here. Um, you know, what we've seen in the short time that since a feedlot has been commercially available is that, you know, and it shouldn't be of any surprise for anybody that does feed cattle, is that the, the, the major issue that we're dealing with out there on a, from a health standpoint is BRD, bovine respiratory yep. disease, All right? And so what we routinely see is that in lots that are being monitored by sense of feedlot, what we typically see is that we can pull that mortality number down just simply because the system is finding those animals earlier in the disease phase, but it's also finding those animals that would have gone undiagnosed. All right. Yep. And so in a lot of ways, you know, if you think about it as you're watching a movie, basically what we're doing is that we're trying to hit the rewind button and start from a little bit further back. And if we can get, you know, therapy in those animals as early as we can, and also in those animals that we would have missed, we're, we're giving them the best shot. We're not, there's no guarantee that they're gonna respond. They still have to respond. Well, one, you still gotta get an antibiotic in them. Yep. And two, they, they have to respond to that antibiotic, right? But you're at least giving them the best shot. And so what we've observed, not only in our own clinical trial data, but also at the customer level, is that we're able to pull that mortality number down. Now, at the end of the day, I think, you know, just to be completely transparent, you know, there's things that we've experienced that we, we didn't necessarily envision um, in, in some ways, and in some ways we did. You know, we do generally see treatment numbers go up, yeah. right? And, and that's due for a couple different reasons. One is that, you know, you're always trying to match the, the, the accuracy of the system to the, the health risk of the group. And that's a little bit of a moving target, yep. right? Yep. The other thing is, is that there could be a lot of subclinical disease out there that we that have gone unrecognized that we're just not aware of. And so there's a, there's pieces of all that in there. So that, that, that can be a little bit of a challenge to get over. Honestly, the largest challenge the, is, the, is the paradigm shift of what a sick calf looks like. Yep. And so, you know, traditionally we capture animals based on clinical signs and, and rectal temperature, and they look a certain way. Again, as we use the analogy of the movie, if we back that up four or five days, that animal looks a lot different. Yeah. And looks very healthy, looks very, you know, maybe eating. And so to convince somebody that that animal is sick and that it needs to be pulled at that time takes a little bit of finesse and time, but uh, uh, we're getting there. Well, and, and, and I've used it in yards that I consult and, and we continue to use it. It's an unbelievable tool. But just to your point, that tool, we don't use it, we haven't used it in every pen in the yard, but it has, that tool has trained our cowboys to look at animals differently because they see what the machine's pulling yeah. and now their brain is, is dialing into that. And so we see even improved pulls with the cowboys just riding in the pen seeing those animals. Yeah, no, that, that, is, that is a very frequent uh, piece of feedback that we receive as well, is that uh, it has proven to, to train them and, yep. and honestly make them look at animals different. Uh, it just takes some time to get there. Perfect. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about how this technology is being adapted to the cow-calf area. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part, from the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver. You rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Roped and ranched all my life. A few years ago, I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder. And after speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa, he told me that he could make my shoulder better if he did surgery, but he absolutely couldn't fix it. And I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I 
did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. We work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here, and my right shoulder doesn't get sore. It's, it's like a baby's arm. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, for your firearm and ammo needs, for gun safes and much, much more, and to have it personalized, come visit us at United Patriot Supply outside of Seneca, Kansas. You can also visit us online at unitedpatriotsupply.com. Be sure to say that Dr. Dan and Doc Talk sent you, and we'll see you down the road. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at idex.com slash doctalk. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jason Nickel, who's a veterinarian. He is the Director of Insights and Outcomes at Merck Animal Health, where he is working with so many cool technologies that we in the industry will have them as everyday pieces of technology. I'm convinced uh, it's a matter of when, not if. We talked about what, what we've do, done in the feed yard. Talk now about what you're working on with cow-calf and, and maybe where the future is. Yeah, no doubt. So, you know, we have over 30 million beef cows in this country. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's there's a, a lot of uh, opportunity to really hone in and our precision around how those animals are managed and, and, and how we look at a lot of different things. Where we have elected to start in the cow-calf journey, if you will, is in the area of reproduction and specifically estrus detection. And so we will later this year be formally rolling out a new system, a relatively new system. It has been available, but we've made major upgrades to it uh, called Sensub Cow-Calf. We're not very clever around here. So it's <laughs> Sensub Dairy, Sensub Cow-Calf, Sensub Feedlot, what have you. So, but Sensub Cow-Calf is, is basically that, that, that same concept being applied uh, to the cow, to the beef cow. And the, with the, with the, with the objective in this particular case for estrus detection. And so as you can imagine where this fits right now is in that AI, this being artificial insemination space or the ET world right now is where we're really kind of focused in on. And so what our research and development data would indicate is that this system is extremely sensitive and very specific to the gold standard of estrus detection, which included not only visual observation, but also pregnancy detection. Okay. And so, admittedly, we're very early in this journey, uh, but uh, the early indication from uh, uh, customer feedback is very positive. We're gonna be entering into uh, larger clinical trial data to really tell us what that value, where that value is with the system relative to traditional approaches, but we're excited about what we're seeing. Yeah, as I know you, you defined AI, you know, working yeah. with cows and computers, you gotta um, be careful. when we say AI and, and you're talking to the computer guys and they don't know if it's artificial intelligence or insemination, yeah. there is a distinct difference between the two. There, there's a pretty distinct difference there. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful about who you're talking to there. Yeah. How do you see this rolling out? How do you see this developing with, with cow-calf? Yeah, so I, right right out of the gate, we're, we're going to be looking at, you know, that, that that producer that uses artificial insemination and or embryo transfer. Uh, and so, you know, that will probably be the customer that we focus on right out of the gate. Uh, you know, down the road, will we be, will we be able to find uh, other applications for this in, in, the bull, in, the, in the bull breeding space? You know, whether that be, you know, keeping an eye, you know, for uh, because it does track activity in those females. And so does, will that give us an indication of, you know, 
well, one, we'll be able to tell who comes back into heat after yep. being exposed to that bull, right? So that gives us an opportunity to, in a more objective way of getting potentially rid of those females before, uh, you know, we preg check them later on in the year. Yep. Uh, it may give us an idea of forage availability if we start to see a lot of activity in those females when we see forage, uh, uh, forage uh, numbers go down. Um, you know, but that that area is a big area that that honestly we have yet to dive into. But right out of the gate, we're going to be focusing on that reproduction space. It's unbelievable technology. Check out Sense Hub, Merck Animal Health. Um, Dr. Jason, thanks for being on the show. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to find us, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Jason Nickel, and we'll see you down the road. At Merck Animal Health, we support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow.